Hello, welcome back to Tutoring Success, my level 7 pioneers. In this video, I'm going to teach you the theoretical part of cycle geometry. As we all know that in cycle geometry in grade 11, we are dealing with theorems. Theorems are proven statements long, long time ago. So we won't go over whose uncle created theorem 2 and grandfather who created theorem 3. So we are just going to look at what is really, really important. So if you hear some external sounds, please bear with me, guys. There are a lot of external sounds that I'm hearing. Hopefully my mic doesn't pick it up. So um, our first theorem, uh, it simply states that the line drawn from center, given that it's perpendicular, that simply means it bisects the chord. So I always say that when you see the word bisect, it simply means that um, it is being cut into, into two equal parts, right? So that simply means that AB is equal to BC. And your statement or your reasoning, you are going to say perpendicular line from center bisects the chord, right? And they also want you to know how to prove this theorem. So if you can go and watch it, my Euclidean geometry playlist, you will find theorem one where I'm proving theorem one. So on our second theorem, which is also examinable, so I would say that is one of the most important things or um, theorems that you can find on your exam question. They will tell you to prove theorem two. So go to our playlist and search for it. So this theorem simply states that the angle at the center is equal to two times angle at the circumference. What does that mean? It simply means that angle AOP is equal to two times angle C. So here we, we, we are having angle AOP, which is 2x, and our angle at the circumference is angle C. So it's going to be x. In a numerical form, if you are given that, uh, I forgot to put O here, guys. If you are given that angle AOP is equal to 60 degrees, that simply means the angle at the circumference, which is angle C, is equal to 30 degrees. Hopefully, I'm understandable, guys. If you're having any question, please hit me up on my comment section below. I will make sure I get back to you. So, our next theorem is the third theorem. So, this one is not examinable, but it's it's crucial for our level, level 7 pioneers to know this theorem, right? So, it simply states that the angle which is, which is substantiated by a diameter right so our diameter in this case is pr an angle that is subtended by a diameter is equal to 90 degrees right so you are going to simply state that angle pqr is equal to 90 degrees and your reasoning is going to be angle in a semicircle we all know what is a semicircle right a semicircle it's a half of a circle and another thing guys that you need to note is that if you can look this angle at the center is equal to 180 isn't it so that means 180 divided by 2 it gives us 90 degrees so theorem 2 has a direct relation with theorem um, uh, theorem number 3 actually so 2 and 3 they go hand in hand so but you must also uh, note that when you are when you are using theorem 3 actually or when you are stating that this angle is 90 degrees you must say angle in a semicircle not angle at the center is two times angle at the circumference so on our next theorem which is the fourth theorem we are having we are having um we are having angles guys angles which are equal so if you are given something like this that looks like a bow tie guys hopefully we all know what is a bow tie right if you are given something that is a bow tie that simply means angle a is equal to angle b and angle c is equal to angle d right so your reasoning is going to be um 
angles subtended by the same chord or the same arc because sometimes they will not give you a chord so you must state that it is subtended by the same arc so in this case our arc is going to be ct right arc ct subtends angle ap at the circumference so your reasoning is going to be angles subtended by the same chord or by the same arc right then we go to theorem number five in theorem number five guys we are having a cyclic quad a cyclic quadrilateral guys i have uh, i have a more detailed video that i'm going to link on your screen right now that's where i am discussing a lot more about the cyclic quad and its properties but one of its most valuable property is that it is a four-sided shape that fits perfectly on our circles and its vertexes are at our circumference once you see a shape like this guys don't ask anyone even me don't ask me just know that this is a cyclic quadrilateral my level seven pioneers must know that this is a cyclic quadrilateral and its first property is that when you are adding um opposite angles uh, they must give you 180 so you are going to say a angle a i mean plus angle c is equal to 180 your reasoning you are going to say opposite angles of a cyclic quad are supplementary or a cyclic quadrilateral are supplementary meaning that they are adding up to 180 degrees and then we have another special case of a cyclic quadrilateral which is our theorem six right so this one is pretty confusing sometimes but it's also understandable right so in this case we are given this cyclic quadrilateral my level seven pioneers already know that this is a cyclic quadrilateral because it's a four-sided shape its vertexes are at the circumference so you you do not even need to ask god guys so we all know that a four-sided shape that fits perfectly on our circle is a cyclic quadrilateral so in theorem six they simply states that this external angle which is angle d2 is equal to angle b so your reasoning you are going to say exterior angle of a cyclic quadrilateral is equal to the interior opposite angle right hopefully i'm understandable if you are having any question please don't hesitate to post it on our comment section below and if this video is valuable to you so far don't forget to hit that like button or pop it <laughs> okay uh, in theorem 7 guys we are having a tangent a tangent guys is a line that touches the circle once so in this case our tangent is dce right so our first situation with tangents it's a tancourt theorem right so what does a tancourt theorem states it simply states that this angle that is made between a tangent and a chord is equal to the angle that is subtended by the same chord by the same chord that is subtended by the same chord at the circumference which is a in this situation right hopefully i'm understandable guys because this one they like to play around with this one guys so you must be fully prepared and i always encourage my students to do at least one question in euclidean geometry a day so let's go at it again guys so tancourt theorem simply states that this angle that is made between a tangent here is our tangent and a chord this angle that is made between a tangent and a chord it's equal to this angle that is subtended by the same chord that made this angle by the same chord but where at the circumference so you are going to place your finger here you are going to take it to the circumference and you are going to place another finger and where they meet 
that's the angle that you are looking for guys so the reason why i'm emphasizing is because uh i've uh, like i've come across with many situation with tanko theorems so please my level seven pioneers practice euclidean geometry every day that's our first situation right hopefully i'm understandable and our second situation simply states that uh, angle c I mean angle OCD, OCD, which is this one, OCD is equal to 90 degrees. And your reasoning, you are going to say our tangent is perpendicular to our radius, or you can say tan red, right? So this, this theorem is pretty much straightforward, guys. You are going to be having a radius. Sometimes they don't just give you a radius, they give you a diameter, but my level 7 student or my level 7 pioneer must know that a diameter is simply two radiuses, guys. So if you are given something like this, my level 7 pioneers will know that we are having a 90 degrees on our head. So that's pretty much what um, theorem 7 is all about. So on our last theorem, last theorem, it simply states that the angle ah <laughs> i'm lying guys not the angle it simply states that uh, the tangents tangents drawn from the same point right they are equal meaning that in our situation um we are having ac is equals to bc right so your reasoning you are going to say uh yeah I did a mistake. We are going to say tangents um, drawn from the same point, right? You are going to say tangent or ta tangents uh, from the same point, right? So if you are given two tangents that are drawn from the same point to the same circle, we all know that it's our theorem eight. So that's all you need to know about cycle geometry guys hopefully you are preparing for our june exam and this video was so valuable to you so please don't forget to put that like button and consider subscribing so on our next video i will be treating an exam question uh, on euclidean geometry so on to our next video